Okay, I want to um, go over um, an example of this type of problem that you skipped before. Um, so what we have here is that we want to find or determine the intervals at which f is continuous where the function is given here. Okay, so what we have is that um, this is what actually what's called a piecewise or it's a type of piecewise function where you have different components and each component is has its own like restrictive domain. Okay. Um, so the first part that you see here is, is for this, right? You have 10 minus 4 e to the 5 minus x. So the domain for that, the restrict the restricted domain is going to be for x strictly bigger than 5. And then the other piece is going to be um, 10 minus 3 fifths x, which is this is just a line. Uh, but the restricted domain here is going to be when x is less than equal to 5. So again, whenever x is strictly bigger than five, then we're on this piece of the graph. Okay? When x is less than or equal to five, including when x is equal to five, we're on this part of the function. Okay? So in this case, what we need to do is we, we want to um, basically determine where this function is. Um, okay, so we have this definition here. So this is the mathematical definition um, that is saying, basically it's saying that if a function is continuous at a certain point, okay, so that being x equals to c, or c is just some value, then the following have to be, all these have to be satisfied. Okay, so, so f of c, right, so plugging in c into the function, that has to be defined, all right? What I mean by that is that you're not going to end up getting, there's no vertical asymptote, right, there's no hole, okay, it has to be defined, meaning that for whatever c, you're going to get some output. Um, the limit has to exist as x approaches c for this function. Okay? So with these two, then what's happened, then the third statement is that you're going to get a limit, right? So we know that the limit exists, but furthermore, it's the limit of this is going to equal to f of c, which we know is defined. So three is kind of, so basically three is when one is equal to two, okay? So all three of these must be satisfied, okay, for a function to be continuous at a single point, okay? All right. So what we can do here is look, let's, what we have to, you know, be careful of is that we have um, this five here, right, this point. So we don't exactly know, right? We don't know yet what's happening at exactly when X is equal to five. There could be a jump, right? Um, you know, there could be, um, maybe there's a hole, so we'll see, we'll see what's going on, okay? Um, so the thing is with this, all right, so, so we know that this is gonna be continuous, right? For X bigger than, strictly bigger than five, because um, we have 10 here, that's just a constant. And then E, anything you have E, right? The exponential function, that in general is continuous everywhere, all right? So therefore we know that this, right, this function, it's going to be continuous when x is strictly bigger than five. Okay. Um, and remember, there's a um, there's another theorem that says that if you have if a function is continuous and you have another function that's continuous, and when you add them together, um, they're going to be continuous at that point as well. Okay. All right. So therefore, we know that. So we're just going to go ahead and write this down. Uh, we know that ten minus four. 10 minus 4e to the 5 minus x is continuous or right, it's continuous for on a given interval. Okay. Yeah. So that is that is given. Again, this is a constant, right? Constant functions are always continuous. And this is continuous. So when you take the difference, you get back a continuous function. Okay. Now let's look at this, the second part. Well, this is linear. And this is and linear functions are basically um, polynomials. Okay? They're part of the classification of what's called polynomial functions. Polynomials are always continuous everywhere. So therefore, this is definitely going to be. Um, continuous for this restriction.
Okay. Again, this is because we're only looking for this piece, right? This piece of F, we're only looking here for this X, right? For those particular X values. Okay. And the same thing for here. We're only looking on this part of the domain. So, so we know that, okay, is this continuous for this, for these X values? We know this is continuous everywhere for these X values. Now, the question that I, the question here, right? The important question is what is happening at, um, what is happening, right? From when X is equal to five, right? So to answer this question, we need to go back to the we need to go back to the to the concept of using the limit. Okay. So what we're going to do, right, we're going to take right, uh, we need to take the limit of this function as x approaches five. Right. Because like I said, we don't know what's happening. Maybe there's a jump, right? Uh, maybe there's a jump, or maybe it is continuous at that point. Uh, but we have to see that analytically. Okay, so we're going to take the limit first. We'll say x is x. The limit of our function as x approaches five, and because the way it's set up here, uh, we need to right. We need to look at the left and right hand limit. So um, the first one is we're going to look at what happens as x approaches five from the left. All right, so which so which piece is it? Well, it turns out it's going to be um, for this piece, okay? Because as x approaches five from the left, right, we're on this part. Okay? So let me draw the visual for that. So here is five. Okay? That is the point that we're interested in. And so as X approaches five from the left, notice that we're on the left-hand side of five. So that means that this condition, when X is less than or equal to five. So X is approaching five from this direction. So that means we have to use this piece. So we're gonna have 10 minus three fifths times X. So another thing here to be, to be aware of, it's always good. Um, to put parentheses around your function when you're taking the limit. Um, if you have, if you don't have those, it looks, it, it looks bad mathematically, right? Um, it doesn't look like, it doesn't um, look that uh, formal. Right? So it's good habit. Um, and, and it's easier for the reader to understand what you're, what, you know, what it's being applied. To. So just try to get in the habit of doing that. So throughout the, uh, you know, throughout these videos, I'm going to, you know, I, I mentioned certain points that Um, all right. So again, we're using this because X is right, we're, we're approaching five, right? X is approaching five from the left. Okay. All right. So, so now what we do is right, we just do a, a um, direct substitution, right? Or just plug in X equals to five. We're going to get 10 minus three fifths times five. Um, the fives will cancel out, so we're going to be left with 10 minus 3 here, and that's going to obviously be equal to 7. Okay. All right, then now we have to look at what's happening as x approaches 5 from the right side. Okay, so x is approaching 5 from the left, there's a minus sign, in this case, there's a plus sign here. So x is approaching 5 from the right side. So obviously it's going to be the other part, uh, but we can see that when X is approaching five from the right, that that's for this case, when X is bigger than five. So all the values here are bigger than five, are approaching five from the right. So that means we're going to use this piece of the function. All right, so we have 10 minus four, e to the five minus x. All 
All right. So now just so again, do a direct substitution here. So we have 10 minus 4e, 5 minus 5. So we're just plugging in uh, or letting x be equals to 5. This is going to give us 10 minus 4e to the 0. Remember that e to the 0 is 1. Okay. Um, anything besides 0 that you're raising to a power of 0 is going to be 1. Zero to the zero is not one, okay? But anything else, so any number besides zero that you're raising to zero will always be one, okay? Um, except I, also infinity, right? Infinity to zero is not one either. So there are some exceptions to that rule, okay? So in this case, e, so e to zero is gonna be one, 10 minus four is gonna be six. Okay. Um, there we go. Um, so from this, Right, we can obviously see that the left hand limit and the right hand limits don't equal. Okay, they're going to, right? Um, so, therefore, the overall limit doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, so, left hand, right, let's see, just right here, left hand limit. And this is the right hand limit. Okay, so now, um, so what we have here, right, we have that, we showed that um, the left and right hand limits don't equal. Okay, so this tells us that there is a jump. Okay, there is a jump in this function. Um, and so therefore, this also, so furthermore, this is showing us that this function is not continuous at x equals to five. That's what this is saying. Okay. So we know that, right, we know each piece, right, each piece is continuous on its respective domain. Okay, what I mean by that is this. So this function is continuous for this, for these x values. This function is continuous for these x values. But at x equals five, right, there is a jump. Okay, so that's the point of discontinuity here. Okay, um, so going back to the question, right, it says determine the intervals at which the function is continuous. Um, so that means it's going to be continuous everywhere except x equals to five. So we can write our solution this way. So our solution is this. So we're going from minus infinity to five. And we put a parenthesis, parenthesis around there because we don't want to include five. Now the question here is, um, okay, so let me back up here. Um, the question is now, so five, where is five? So that's gonna, so then we have to go back here. So that's, we have to go back to this definition. Okay, so is there gonna be a parentheses or bracket here? Okay, so when we plug in, right? So what we have, so what we have to do is evaluate this function at five, okay? So let's go and do that. So f of five is going to be equal to uh, we know right when x is exactly five, that means we have to use this part. Okay, so that's going to be 10 minus three this times five. That's going to give us seven. Okay. Now that was the result. Okay. Um, that was the result that we ended up uh, for here. Um, for this from this part, okay? okay? So we also, so notice that the limit, right? As X approaches five for the left is equal to F of five, okay? So I'm just gonna write that down here.
So the function value, right? So the fun so the function value at five is equal to the limit. Right? So that means that five must be right. We must include. Right? We have to include our. We have to include five. So five is going to so five is defined, and then um, and then we're going to have another interval. So that's what this means. The union means that we're going to throw in another set, and for that, okay, that's when x is strictly bigger than five. So we don't want to. Right? So five is not going to be included, and then it's going to go to infinity. All right. So we can see that the function, okay. Right, as, as you're going from minus infinity to five, uh, which that's going to be on this part of the function. And then the, and so this point is defined here. Okay. Um, and then it's going to, and then it's going to jump, right? So at five, right, when it goes, when it goes over here, it's going to, it's going to, um, it's going to actually go to six, okay? But it's not, but it's, Actually, at x equals five is defined here. Right. So, um, so when you when you see this, okay, at x equals when x equals to five, um, you'll definitely see a jump. Okay. So, in fact, the endpoint okay, for this one, um, when the endpoint for that function is going to be at seven, okay, and then the next one, right, it's going to be there's going to be an open point at six. Because again, because the function value at five is equal to seven, which is it, which is equal to the left hand limit. Right. So this is a good illustration of this of this definition. So if we put everything again, putting everything together, um, this shows us right. This shows us that this um, function is not continuous at five. Um, again, because the function is right, so f of c is defined. Function value is defined at five. Okay, we had we showed that here. Okay, it's seven, but the overall limit doesn't exist. Right, that's what we showed here. Okay? These two values don't equal to each other. Okay? So therefore, again, we can conclude right that this function is not continuous at x equal to five. And then furthermore, uh, we can write the solution this way. Here. So this is the. Right, these are the intervals. For which this function is continuous. So what I want to do now is show you. Um, I'll show you the graph of this. Take a look at what, what this looks like. All right. So what you can see here. Okay. Again. So the the blue line here is the that is our linear line. So that was 10 minus 3 fifths x. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see. Here is that x equals to 5. We said that when x is less than or equal to 5, this is function is it linear. As soon as, okay, and also here, so when s when at x equals to 5, you're getting 7 here. Zoom in to show you that. Six, seven, eight, so seven. Okay, and then um, when x is strictly bigger than five, okay, there's a hole right here. Okay, because it's going to be it's defined up here. So again, you can see this in terms of the limit. The limit as x approaches five from the left, we're approaching seven. And then the limit as x approaches five from the right, we're getting closer and closer to six. So there's a there's a jump here. So this is also called the. Um, so this is actually a good example of a non-removable discontinuity. Okay. So again, it is continuous everywhere except at x equals to five. Okay. So just put a note here. x equals five is, 
is a non-removable viscosity. Or I can say it this way. Better to say it this way. So there is a non-removable discontinuity at x equals to five. And again, we show that here. We're getting right. We're getting f of five is exactly right? so that's equal to this limit, and then which is for x approaching five from the left, and then the limit as x approaches five from the right through e to six. All right. So I. I I hope that um, this explains, you know, the idea of, you know, this definition, and you know, gives you a better clarification of how to 